This girl walked into class about four years ago, back in 2010, and she wore this strange thing on her arm, this shiny thing. And she didn't know the technology behind it, but her friends were jealous, and they asked where they could buy one. And her response was, you can't, because it was 3D printed just for her. It's the only one of its kind. And so they asked the next best thing, which was, can they try it on? And she said, no, 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 you can't do that either. Because it was created using a 3D scan of her arm, so even though it fit her perfectly, it wouldn't fit anyone else at all. And besides, the designer and the doctor who made it for her told her not to take it off for four weeks, because, see, she had fallen off the swing the week before and broken her arm severely, and this was the cast that was helping her to heal. But what's more remarkable is that when she was finished, when she was healed four weeks later, she didn't want to give the cast back. <laughs> See, by then, it had become jewelry. It had become fashion to her. She loved it. The strange thing, this is what surprised us, she actually tanned her name into her arm. And so in that day, a strange thing happened, because the line between design and technology and fashion, three somewhat unrelated fields, was somehow blurred. They all became one. And in a sense, we ask, why shouldn't they be? Why shouldn't this be the way it is for all, all medical devices? Because when we think of medical products, we think of things that are brutal, and things that are, that are utilitarian and functional, but to an extreme. We think of the problem, we don't think of the person. We never think of beauty, because the idea of beauty would undermine the credibility of the medicine, because we have it in our heads that if medicine doesn't taste bad, then it can't possibly work. <laughs> And so perhaps that leads to an antagonistic relationship between the products that are here for our benefit and the people that they're there to serve. But what if we shook things up a bit? What if we changed this all and said, instead of thinking of design as design and medicine as medicine, what if we thought of design as medicine? What would that do? What would happen if these were, instead of antagonists, if these were collaborative fields? What might that bring? Because in a sense, they both offer something the other can't. They amplify each other. What would it take for us to fall in love with those products that are here to serve us? Because after all, those products are here for us alone. And then to throw into the mix, we have the new technologies, specifically 3D scanning and 3D printing, technologies that are so versatile and so enabling that they not only change the way we create products, they change the way we think about creating problem-solving products, the way we actually address some of the challenges that we face. Sometimes it's the revolution in the technology that leads to the change of thinking. When you combine design and medicine, you open the doors for new opportunities for human care and quality of life. These girls, for example, have broken legs, but they live at the beach. They spend their time in the sand. So the, the casts that were created for the legs were 3D scanned from their bodies and 3D printed. So they could go to the beach, they could play in the sand, they could play in the water, and when they get home, the patterning in the, the braces, not only ventilated them and comfort comfortable, but it let the sand go away and let them sleep in it and be comfortable in their braces. And perhaps as significantly, when they were healed, the braces came off simply by opening the hinge, not with a buzzsaw that terrifies children. Or you look at scoliosis treatment. Traditional medical treatment means the child wears a brace that forces the spine into the correct orientation. And this works great provided that the patient wears the brace extensively for several years. In other words, if the patient simply does not like the brace, she won't wear the brace, and if she doesn't wear the brace, she won't be healed, and all the medicine is for nothing. So in a sense, you could say that the medical role is to make the patient like the brace. So instead, if we design a fashion item that happens to serve a medical purpose, we can open up a new opportunity, we can rephrase the experience and open up a new look at the medical quality of, of her care. Now, this brace was created with a 3D scan of her body, digitally corrected, and then 3D printed. So it wasn't as much made for her as it was made from her. That it's a perfect fit to her body, so it's invisible under clothing. But when you look at the pattern, the pattern is what really adds the design, the medicine, and the magic to it. Because the pattern not only makes the, the brace lighter, because it's less material, and it makes it less expensive, which is important because 3D printing, you pay by the material. It also makes her skin breathe, so she's more comfortable. But most importantly of all, she gets to choose the pattern. 
that we give her agency in the process. We invite her into the process, let her be the co-designer of the product that is going to be a big part of her life for the next couple of years. By her engaging in the product's creation that is for her body, she will then like it more. And if she likes it more, she wears it more. If she wears it more, she will be fixed. And so in this case, the best design is the best medicine. Or we look at prosthetic limbs. They can do amazing things for the body as far as restoring our ability to walk and run and perform regular activities. But what they don't do is they don't look at those components of being human that go beyond the mechanical aspects of walking. They don't look at our individuality, our uniqueness, our personality, our style. They leave it at our ability to walk. But what if instead we went beyond that and tried to treat the product as a vehicle for art and design? What if we treated it as a thing of fashion and beauty, if we tried to elevate it into the world of art beyond the world of machine? What if we rephrased the story and took something that had been a source of discomfort and turned it into an opportunity for social engagement? Because we can 3D scan and 3D print, we can create something unimaginable otherwise. We can recreate symmetry and body form and uniqueness in the body. We can take something that would have been mechanical and utilitarian and turn it into something expressive. We can let the person turn their body into their art and their sculpture, which is what it really is after all, isn't it? We can take the attention away from the machinery and the hardware and turn it back to the person and their fashion, their style, their individuality. We can re-engage the person with society and change the ways they see their self, see their body, see themselves, and the way society interacts with them. So it's really not art or medicine, it's art and medicine. Amanda here broke her spine in a ski accident several years ago. And although she can't walk without the assistance of this robot, now she's able to engage with people eye to eye. She's able to walk, she's able to interact, because the robot now that she wears lets her walk. But now what is in our mind's eye is something equally exciting, is where this goes next. Maybe this will reach a point where it's not a robot that she straps on, but it will be more like fashion that she wears. That would be the, the truly revolutionary difference. Well now, when we can 3D scan her body and turn her into the part of the design process, she becomes the first ingredient in the process. It rewrites the way we design a product. Instead of making her the last ingredient in the equation, we make her the first ingredient in the equation. And suddenly, as we're printing the parts, we're able to create parts that are directly aimed at the intent, rather than the intent as limited by the means of production. And we can start creating a product now that is, uses her own body as its canvas, as its underlay, as its reference model. All of a sudden, the parts become interstitial components that connect her body to the robot into one single symbiotic kinematic form. The parts can be designed in such a way that, in this case, they're patterned not only does that make it stronger and more flexible and lighter, but also there's a visual metaphor for the musculature that this replaces. And of course, we 3D printed sterling silver jewelry because we decided that this robot needed jewelry. So the final form is as much an expression of her body as it is an extension of her personality and her sense of style. Now, Amanda took her very first steps in this robot about six months ago, not far from here. And it served to remind us that the ability to go from atoms into bits and back into atoms creates opportunities to address needs of the human and quality of life issues that really can't be done in any other way. It's a reminder also that every one of us is, was, or will be disabled. So the value of the marriage between design and medicine as enabled by technology is really something that's here for all of us. Thank you.